This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian. My co-host this week is The Cat. Hello, my minions. She has minions now. You, okay, you, Jillian, and Diamante Haga need to have a minion off. Well, I would probably have the least, but, um, I mean, we have probably equal number of creepers and stalkers, so, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, just, just be careful of those creepers. Don't let them get behind you, because you'll In never... dark alleys? Especially in dark alleys. Especially <laughs> in dark alleys, because you never know when they sneak up behind you and explode. Wait, and we're talking. Oh, wait, we're talking about different kinds of creepers, aren't we? <laughs> um, I think we are. You're thinking like what Minecraft? Yes, I am. <laughs> you are lucky that I, as a non-gamer, understood that reference. <laughs> but a... I just tapped in America, and I was like, I understood that reference. Yes. <laughs> oh yes, I've been doing a lot of Minecraft stuff lately, getting ready for the uh, Minecraft machinima thing that we're going to be working on. I'm having to extend our timetable a little bit because writing issues, because I apparently can't write storylines worth a shit. Uh, and I have no problem admitting that. Uh, so, But uh, we also have a very special guest this week. We have, you guys have known her before as Lady Spaz, but we also know her and she's going to be known from here on out as Jessica Trick. How you doing? Hey, okay, so on the minion thing, I just want you to know that I'm a henchwoman of Dr. Holocaust, so... <laughs> so you might want to you might wanna call him too. I'm just saying. <laughs> <Dang it. laughs> So, so for those who have never heard of you, which at this point I'm surprised if they haven't, because we kind of have similar audiences and everything. But for new and people I'm out there, loud as a person. yes, very loud. And uh, loud. Sorry. Goddamn girl. <laughs> Goddamn. <laughs> yeah. So, so to the people who have never heard of you before, um, what what do you do? What do you like? Just real quick. Um, okay, what do I do? What do I do? Um, I grad school. That's what I do. <laughs> Bro, do you even grad school? I do yes. grad school. That's exactly what happens. Um, no, I just got off a, a, my first residency at Goucher College in Baltimore um, for uh, a master's in cultural sustainability. And uh, I'm going to be writing a master's thesis on stuff that I totally can't talk about yet because I don't have the groundwork for it done. Mm. Um <laughs> but I know what I want to do. I just can't announce it because it's going to be a groundbreaking paper in that no one's ever done it before. Yeah. So in the field. So I have to kind of keep it under wraps just in case until like literally the second before I publish it. So um, that's a thing. And then um, most of most people know me as uh, Lady Spaz, like you said. Uh, I have a sh web series called Fool's Gold, The Mediocrity of the Golden Age of Hollywood, where I look at serials and pre-code movies and terrible movies and good movies of the golden age of Hollywood. And I talked about the issues and the cultural implications of why we still watch those movies or why we should just stay the hell away from them. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I've done everything from Casablanca to torture ship to Dr. Strange love to, um, that really, really crazy messed up movie that was made for $10,000, uh, about mixed up zombies or something. Also zombies? sex madness. Also sex madness. That was a thing that happened. Woohoo! Sex madness is actually a, a, a bastard cousin of reefer madness, mm -hmm. but it has no actual sex in it. Uh -huh. So I have no idea what I was watching. Wow. So okay. So if sex madness wanted to be if you if a filmmaker wanted to do sex madness right, it would have to be a porno, wouldn't it? No, I mean I think that you could get away with it not being a porno, but I think that you would have to like take the time to actually like figure out how to do it without it being too graphic. Like, did you see blue is the warmest color? Uh, I have not. Okay. Like that three hour monstrosity of awesome is really, really awesome. However, I really think that if they had taken some of the dialogue out and just put in a little more sex scenes, mm -hmm. that could have been a really good movie in terms of like not feeling like it was dragging on and on and on. And I think that's what sex madness should be should be a little bit of dialogue about what it's about and then sex 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 dialogue sex 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 credits dialogue sex wow there you go 
<laughs> I'm confused about the order of sex and dialogue. Can you repeat that? <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. You, you, you can't, this is the problem with me. Once I say something, like it's totally gone. Like I can't even. <laughs> Good take thing it we're back. recording this. Yes. <laughs> yeah. People if we like, weren't recording this, we'd be so screwed. You, we you, wouldn't know where to put our sex and where to put our dialogue. Yeah, I know. I know. I, I, I just sum it up as have sex, have dialogue, have sexy dialogue. There you go. <laughs> Credits. There you go. Credits, <laughs> post credit sequence, which I know you both have seen Guardians of the Galaxy. I've seen you both post about it. I Twice. Yeah, you saw it twice. Dude, I'm going to go see it again, like, August 11th. I'm really excited. It was the best thing. Okay, here's my thing about Guardians of the Galaxy, which is not actually a spoiler, so it's okay. Mm -hmm. um, are you familiar with the fact that Dave Bautista is a wrestler? Um, Maybe. Okay, Dave Bautista is a wrestler. Now you know. Uh -huh. Okay, <laughs> now that we've established that. Um, I really hated him in professional wrestling. Like, I watched WWE, for those of you who totally know that I'm also internet AJ. Mm -hmm. Um, he's really freaking boring on WWE. But in this movie, I actually felt a genuine human emotional connection to him, despite the fact that he's called Drax the Destroyer. And I feel like giving away his backstory is kind of ruining the plot, so I won't. But, um, I really felt like he, like like stepped it up and like really did a really good job and I was like really interested in his story mm -hmm. and I just love Rocket Raccoon. There you I go. took like six like six tests of which Guardian of the Galaxy are you and I always got Rocket Raccoon. Nice. I was like I'm like I'm not even Gamora like I can't be that badass but I could totally be Rocket Raccoon. I'm the kind of motherfucker who would totally build a bomb and just put it in a box. Hmm. It's a bomb like in a in the box. Trailer. Like, like in the trailer, like that you saw that trailer. Oh, speaking of trailers, I'm watching TV and Guardians of the Galaxy is on my screen. <laughs> That's nice. kind of weird. Segway. Yeah. But I do, I do bring it up because uh, uh, I got spoiled on the uh, credits teaser, the stinger rather, not the teaser. You know. You know uh, how... Are you talking about the one that comes after the main credits or the one at the very end of the credits? The one that spoils something that made me go squee. Uh, because it involves a character that thus far has not been in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, even though he had a movie made about him back in the 80s. And yeah, everybody dude, now is saying the same thing. Dude, so. <laughs> dude, 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 you don't understand. We went to the theater at 11 o'clock at night to go see this movie. And we st we were out there until like 1.30 or whatever, and we were walking back. And like when Howard the – well, everybody knows who it is anyway. Yeah. Howard the Duck, because cause he's the only dude who had a movie who is not in the cinematic universe yet, technically. Yeah. Um, but when Howard appeared, half the audience goes, "What the? who the hell is that? And the other half was like, oh my god, they're finally giving him another movie? <laughs> and I'm like, and I was kind of torn because I was like, I don't know if they're giving him another movie, but it was really nice to see that he appeared. Yes. Uh, yeah, I was, was just like, I was just like, what? And my friends were like, it's Howard Duck. I'm like, I know, but why? <laughs> why? I don't understand. Because Howard the Duck. Like, because no, Howard I've realized, I realize whenever nothing makes sense anymore, I, I think we should adopt this phrase forever, is mm -hmm. whenever something doesn't make sense, always say, because Howard the Duck. And then everybody will understand what is going on, and they will let it lie. And if they don't, you need to explain why Howard the Duck is now becoming a meme. Yes. Oh, God. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was spoiled. Thank you, Cartoon Hero. Thank you. You know, you spoiled me. You spoiled Miss Nightmare, you know, on Twitter. Becky wanted to actually tell, tell me about it um, the night after she saw Guardians of the Galaxy, but... Well, I got spoiled beforehand, but she knew I would squeak because, despite the fact that Howard the you know the original Howard the Duck is a you know bad movie, it's not the best movie in the world. I enjoy the fuck out of it. Oh my god, it's one of my guilty pleasure movies. I swear. It's not even um, a guilty pleasure. I'm proud of it. It's like, hey, fuck you. I like Howard the Duck. Boom. There, there's, there's my, there's my uh, buttons right there on my shirt. There. Boom. <laughs> like my issue with Howard the Duck the movie was just like it was all over the place. And as a movie critic, I can't, like, forgive it that much. Yeah. Like, I can, 
to be a guilt enough to be a guilty pleasure, but I can't do like, oh yeah, I totally enjoyed that movie. No, it's just a guilty pleasure, and that's it's how I feel about Moulin Rouge. Moulin Rouge, I kind of hate, right? But I have it's my guilty pleasure. So like, I just I just kind of like um, the whole you know Lady Marmalade video that they did. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, with Maya, because Maya is such a good singer, and anybody who, who disagrees with me, I will fight you. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, I, I, actually, I never saw the video. I, I heard the song played all over the radio at, the, at that time. It's like, yeah, can't go anywhere was, without hearing it. Yeah. But what I really liked about Guardians of the Galaxy, which is, again, not a spoiler. This is generalizations. Um, I really like how every character was... I, see, Avengers and the Guardians of the Galaxy have the same thing in common in that every character that's part of the main group got story time. Yeah. Which was really awesome. And for a space opera, it went a route that I wasn't expecting, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Right. Having some unexpected things can be a good thing. <laughs> exactly. Uh, like, uh, oh, oh, and since we're, since we're still on the sci-fi thing, sci-fi, comic, you know, ge- more geeky stuff before we hit the news, I do want to say... Uh, that um, just like a couple of days ago, I've been you know doing some stuff with some of the general hospital clips that I have on my computer or whatever, and mm-hmm. I have pretty much the entirety of the uh, of the Ice Princess story back from 1981, and the big bad of this story is John Kalikos, who some people may remember. I think I think the character's name is Kor from Star Trek, and Balthazar from Battlestar Galactica. Well, I, I took a clip because I'm like, you know what, this is gloriously hammy, and this must be shared. So I. Cut out a clip where he's at his, where I felt he was at his most hammiest, and put it up on YouTube and put it on Tumblr. Link Cara got a hold of that, <laughs> and he started really. Gush- he got a hold of it. He gushed a bit over John Calicos, and it was like, you know what, this shows it well. He's like, it's like, fuck yeah, John Calicos, it was awesome. So I, I made I made Link Cara geek out a little bit. <laughs> oh, so I I was very proud of that, very very proud. And and you can too. <laughs> you can actually yeah, go see it. It's yeah. on it's on my Tumblr, and and of course, uh, Linkara reblogged it directly from me. So if you follow him, you follow me. You can find it and check it out, or just check the General Hospital tag or a John Calico's tag on Tumblr. I think I tagged it under John Calico's, definitely under the General Hospital tags. But but you can check them out, or just look at my YouTube channel. It's pretty. He's pretty hammy, and it is glorious. <laughs> oh. So with that, we'll go, we'll go ahead and hit our news for this week because, you know, you know, usually we have shout outs, but it's, it's been one of those weeks. It's for me, it's been a week where I've not only been putting other stuff together and getting things situated for the possibility of being in a show, but also auditions for the site, which all of those emails go out tomorrow. Well, tomorrow here, by the time this goes up, everybody will have theirs. So Okay, 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 okay. I just want to let you know that the only reason I auditioned, and you can totally tell me that, like, I was rejected just like we were all rejected from Tig with Tig, but, you know, (laughs) except for, like, you know, Jackula and Guru and Jerk because they're awesome. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all the other people who made Tig with Tig. By the way, congratulations to everybody who made Tig with Tig. I might not know who all of you are, but, um, of those that I do know, you guys are great colleagues and great friends, and I'm really excited for you. Yes, that Um, is. They are awesome. Welcome to the um, madness. <laughs> but 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 basically, what happens is basically, I, I I pretty much figured out that if I didn't apply to your website, I was going to feel really guilty. And then I realized that what would be really hilarious was that if you gave me an email, mm-hmm. and then I said, "Well, I got on the site, <laughs> but no." Mm. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> but see, that would be a dick move, and I don't do that shit. Yeah, but you know, I, I I treat all emails equally, and I've gotten enough to where I have to basically narrow it down to ten. So, wow, really? I didn't expect you to get that many, actually. I didn't expect me to get that many, but I got enough. I have to narrow it down to ten. Do you um, have like a ballpark figure, like ten. not an exact number? Um, it's over ten. That's that's all I'm saying. I'm not. I am not giving. It's an over exact. ten. It's yes. like so. Eleven. It could be anywhere from a. Uh, it could be anywhere from ten point one <laughs> to like infinity. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Intention- Way to narrow it down. Yeah, that that was intentional. 
But uh, we, I, you know, those ten, they will get their emails tomorrow. The other ones will also get the emails because I, like I said, if you don't, if you don't make it, it's no hard feelings. Everybody just impressed me that much, so it's like, oh my god, I can only choose. I, I have to only be able to choose ten, because it's just, eh. but. But, you know, even after all of this, there will be one probably in about six months or so because I will be eyeing a, a uh, an actual site revamp again towards the end of the year, beginning of next year, and we'll be working on all of that. And at that point, we can go ahead and you know bring in some new people at that point. But just keep an eye on my Tumblr for more announcements on that one. So uh, once the emails are out, the actual link to the auditions will be taken down from the front page of the site. So they'll, they'll officially be closed once those emails are out. Uh, so unless somebody like sends me something while we're recording this, <laughs> then, then um, you know I've pretty much got to pick and choose who I've out of who I've got here. Oh, uh, so yes, that that's something to look forward to. Or I've I'm already totally looked not on that list. Just so you know, everybody knows that I'm not on that <laughs> list, right? Okay. Well, we'll find just out. Checking. We will find out. <laughs> Oh, but here's some people that are definitely not on the list um, uh, from our top news story here. The House voted along party lines Wednesday to move forward with a lawsuit against President Barack Obama to escalating tension between the executive and legislative branches months before the pivotal midterm elections. The 225 to 201 vote authorized the speaker John Boner, because I refuse to call him John Boehner, to take Obama to court on behalf of the House for delaying a provision of the, in the health care overhaul that requires that most employers provide insurance to their workers. Republicans see the delay as a clear example of Obama overstepping his executive authority. Correct me if I'm wrong, but weren't the Republicans wanting this kind of a delay? Okay, well, first of all, to go back to your boner point, um, <laughs> I really think that he really needs to just get a boner and walk out. That's just my feeling. Get a boner instead That's of a... stopping, you know, committing boners. No, not just committing boners, but like, you know, stop stepping on other people's boners. Come on, man. Yes, please. It's but in regards to I, I believe, yes, I believe the Republicans have been doing everything humanly possible to do the thing where they go, oh, it's delayed. We must blame the president. And now they're like, oh, we're not delaying it. So we got to blame the president. <laughs> like your logic makes no sense because how are the duck? <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming up. <laughs> uh, it's just. And, and here's the thing that he is trying to use to justify this. This isn't about Republicans or Democrats. It's about defending the Constitution we swore an oath, swore, swore an oath to. Rather, Are you willing to let any president choose what laws to execute and what laws to change? Oh my god, he's the executive branch, you idiot! Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> that was my, I mean, that I just my, think he doesn't understand brain. how government works at all. Like, at all. I think that if your name is John Boner, you shouldn't be the speaker anyway. Like, could you imagine, like, him, him, like, you know, spelling out his name for, like, some kid, and the kid goes, your name is John Boner? And, like, <laughs> everybody goes, no, no, that's not it! Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, I, as much as I love making fun of his name, I think that there's a real problem in terms of, like, okay, here's the thing. The executive branch is supposed to execute laws. That's why they're called the executive branch. He's supposed to sign bills in the law that pa Congress has passed. It's called checks and balances, people. Come on, look this shit up. I was a European history major, and I know this shit, mostly because I live here. Yeah. And, and even then, one of the things that they do bitch about is he's signing all of these executive orders, and they're like, he's signing too many executive orders. He can't, we can't do this. We must be stopping him. When um, I don't think he's hit Bush records yet. No, Bush has something in like the four thousand area, right? I think so. I thought like mm. something like four thousand, and in, in Obama has something like maybe like twenty five hundred or so. Yeah, like he's getting close, but he's not like so close that he'll go over the line. Yeah, it, this is this to me is showing just another example of Republicans wanting their way. And their way happens to change just because the guy that possibly will be helping them give their way happens to be, and I'm going to say it, a black man. Well, here's the thing about this is that 
Okay. I, 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 I hate this because everybody keeps bothering me about the race card. Mm -hmm. Because everybody keeps bothering me to review Birth of a Nation. And this is one of the reasons I won't do it. Yet. Is that... I feel like I cannot speak to the race card because I'm white. Right. I am a white chick. Like, I'm a minority because I'm a woman, mm -hmm. but I'm also white, which means I am the majority. So I'm in this weird majority-minority vote thing, which is weird, but whatever. And I feel like if you're going to pull the race card, and I feel this is a really terrible joke, but it's true on so many levels. If you're going to pull the race card and you don't have a white hood on, you guys need to just step the fuck off. <laughs> like, there's no, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. You do not... Like, I'm really surprised how often the race card has been pulled, despite the fact that he has been, you know, pretty good in terms of, like, being a president and being, you know, not... Um, he's not overstepping his bounds as much as he could be. Yeah. And and if and the only reason he's giving out some of these executive orders and signing them is because, you know, Congress, especially the House, they don't want to do shit. They're stamping their feet like little children because they didn't get their way in the fucking elections. Oh, right. It's FDR who has almost 4,000. That's right. I forgot. Yeah. 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 Thoughtfully provided us with a link to the thing here. And uh, Barack Obama is currently standing at 183. George W. Bush at 291. And... And Clinton, just to throw this out there, at 364. So. And Reagan. Reagan's at 381. So he signed more than any of those three presidents. But the president that holds the record is FDR with 3,522. 3, but that's also because of most of the New Deal stuff. Yeah. So. so. Yeah. So, so next time anybody from either side, but, but especially Republicans, want to bitch about how many executive orders Barack Obama is signing, George W. Bush... Uh, FDR and fucking Ronald Reagan. They all have signed more than Obama has. So, you know, just to use a few examples from, I don't remember if FDR was Republican or not, but definitely Bush. He was a Democrat. He was a Democrat, okay. But, but even still, just to name a few examples of presidents that they might hold a little dear, there you go. So. Fuck, man. Ulysses S. Grant signed more than Obama. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> I love that John, uh, what is it, John Adams only signed one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, all the way at the top, and Washington signed, like, eight. Yeah. Harrison signed none. Yeah, well, he didn't That's live long hilarious. enough to sign it, man. It's like, <laughs> exactly. It's like, he's in office, then, That's like, true. however long later, it's like, pff, dead. It's like, oh, poor guy. <laughs> oh. Uh, shortest lived president ever. So JFK. far. JFK! JFK, who's been in office less than Obama has, signed 214. Yeah. And he was killed. So shut up is basically what we're saying. Yes. Oh. But now now we come to the next one. This one I love. <laughs> oh, God. Is it the is It, the, is it, it, is, is, it is, is the it... one. It is the one you were talking about before the show. Oh, God, I freaking hate this one. Oh. When the five conservative Supreme Court justices ruled in favor of Hobby Lobby earlier this month, they gave conservative, quote-unquote, Christian employers the ability to force their religious beliefs upon their employees. The decision gave the religious owners of the craft store the power to deny female workers contraception coverage in their health insurance plans. In her scathing dissent, Justice Ginsburg warned that the court had had just paved the way for any religious group to out, out out of any law they believe violated their religious beliefs. This is important to note. And if the satanic temple gets its way, conservatives will be begging the court to reverse itself. In response to the Hobby Lobby ruling, the satanic temple is making the best out of a bad decision by using it to help women exercise their right to choose. Because Satanists sincerely believe in scientific fact, which is a big part of their religion, they object to any law that is based on unscientific claims. So any woman who objects to such laws should be exempt from them. According to the Satanic Temple website, an increasing number of states have passed informed consent laws requiring that women seeking abortions be subjected to state-mandated informational materials that are often false or misleading. We believe that personal decisions should be made with reference only to the best available scientifically valid information. 
site goes on to urge women to download a, le a letter to show their doctor if they want to be exempted from sitting through unscientific right-wing anti-abortion propaganda. If you're a woman seeking an abortion who shares these deeply held beliefs, please print the letter below to present to your care provider informing him or her that you're to be exempted from receiving informed consent materials. This I love. It is basically taking what these right-wing conservative people are trying to force upon the country and turning it back on them. Saying, okay, you, you want to be exempted from something from religious beliefs? Well, we have freedom of religion. That means it's freedom for all religions. We don't believe that these anti-abortion laws that are not based in scientific fact and are really just propaganda and scare tactics to keep women from using their bodies the way they want to. And Well, we don't, we don't believe in that shit. We only believe in the pure, hard scientific evidence, and your beliefs don't match up with that. And so by using our own religious beliefs, we can say, yeah, fuck your law, and if, if you're a woman, you go get yourself an abortion if you need one. Whew. Now, seeing as I have two women on the show, who wants to have at it first? <laughs> um, well, I'm glad, for one, that Boner isn't involved in it. Well, technically it is because birth control, but... Yes. I guess... I guess, like, okay, here's my issue. Um, for those of you who don't know, I did have an abortion in 2007. Okay. And it was not something, it was a very hard decision because I am pro-choice, but I wanted to keep it and I couldn't. So there were reasons that I'm not going to get into, but it was a big issue for me. Right. And, um... Like, I'm still wrestling with it every day, and I don't regret it. I think it was one of the best decisions I've ever made, but I also have, like, I've realized I actually woke up one day. Um, I actually woke up, like, in April at some point and said, wow, if I had kept that baby, it would be seven right now. Yeah. And, like, that just hit me like a ton of bricks. And I feel like... In terms of if you're going to n deny rights to, you know, to... if you're going to deny rights to women because your religious or religious values or beliefs or whatever don't correspond to what that woman wants, I just think you're a fucking dick, honestly. Um, I, I am a full proponent of women's right to choose. I really am, and I really think that it is something that needs to be addressed, and I'm sad that in the 21st century, where most European countries not only have abortion services, but they also give women paid time off for their pregnancies, mm -hmm. that we are still debating this issue. I, that, to yeah. me, is a, like a complete step backwards. Like... We're supposed to be, like, we tout ourselves as, like, you know, we're the greatest country in the world, and we can't even give our women adequate health care so that if something happens to them, whether it be that they have a fallopian pregnancy and it could possibly kill them and they have to wait until, you know, the very last minute and it could be complications from surgery all the way down to, you know, um, you need an abortion because... Um, the child is half formed and won't actually, you know, be able to function or sustain life on its own. Like yeah. all of these issues are reasons to have abortions. It's not just as a form of birth control. And I really hate when Republicans especially piss me off when they're like, oh, well, women should have control over their bodies because all they're going to do is use it as birth control. And I'm like sitting there going, you are the dumbest bitch on the planet. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I can never... I mean, honestly, that. you... Honestly, Gomer, I, I, I would love to hear your opinion, but in terms of this, mm -hmm. I think that because of your equipment, yeah, you can't really speak to how it affects us on a deeper level. Right. But I really do want to hear what Kat has to say. Yes. I've talked enough. Yeah. <laughs> that That's why I, I deferred it to the two of y'all, because... Um, to be completely honest, I'm pretty much on your side with obviously without the you know the experience obviously, but um, mm -hmm. I, I I am generally you know, pretty much on your side there 100%. Um, Kat, do you have anything you want to add to this? I sigh a lot on my other show, so I feel like I need to sigh a lot here. 
Um, I, I think that all of these men who are trying to tell women what to do with their bodies obviously aren't with enough women and don't actually understand how female anatomy works. And yeah. uh, I think they should be subjected to several health classes, like basic fucking health classes that I had to take in school. Because obviously these are old white dudes who are so far removed from their educational years that they don't really remember anything about how to learn stuff. And uh, they should be required to take some anatomy classes and some basic biology classes because clearly they don't understand how any of it fucking works. Um, and they're obviously not getting any in their home life because I think that's the reason why they're so fucking angry at women all the time. So basically they're old, white, crusty dude bros. Uh, I, I think calling them... Uh, dude bros is an insult to dude bros um, because at yeah. least dude bros can be funny when you make fun of them but republicans just make me violently well i say republicans i mean uber conservatives um yeah just really make me want to punch people yeah. i mean mostly conservatives i mean conservatives make me want to punch conservatives it's terrible yeah and I, yeah i mean i feel like it's one of those things where people are always like oh you know, and it's not in and, and the worst thing about it is it's not even the worst thing is not the, 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 the old crusty white guys. There are women who believe that a man should tell her how to choose like her own body. And, and, like, and this is this not is... listen to her own body. You know what I mean? Like there are women out there who think that not being that deferring to a man in terms of your own body when your doctor is telling you the opposite is the right thing to do. And people die because of that. Yeah, it, it's it's horrible. And this is where, like, the argument is made of try and explain to me why I shouldn't have an abortion or why I should do this or that without using religion, and it is impossible. You simply can't. And, it, and it's this whole, this country finds it impossible to uh, separate our government and the way... Um, Despite the fact want us to live, uh, with the religion, fact that we have separation of church and state. Yeah, exactly, I get it. exactly. Mm -hmm. It's 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 fucking it's it's horrible. It's it's going to kill our country. It really is because there are people who do not believe in equality. These are people who simply do not believe in equality because of something that a crusty old book. Here we go to crusty old again. Some crusty old book told them that was written thousands of years ago. It has nothing to do with how we live in the modern age. And if we kept everything the way that we did back then, we would not be here. Like we okay. seriously need yeah, to keep. We the time. we have to grow and evolve. Um, and and not only that, but like, and this goes to what I'm actually studying in grad school is cultural sustainability is basically the study of how we sustain culture without being stupid about it. So, I mean, obviously I'm being flippant about it, but it's honestly one of those things where we're like, okay, this is changing right now and we can't really stop it, but how can we do it in such a way where we preserve the traditions of our culture without being douches about it? All right, so our next story comes out of North Carolina. <laughs> uh, not much happens out of North Carolina, at least not on this show that I've that I can remember. But uh, a North Carolina diner is offering a very different sort of discount to its customers, the prayerful ones. Mary's Gourmet Diner in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, is offering a 15% praying in public discount. Owner Mary Hagland confirmed the discount to The Blaze on Friday, saying that she has actually been offering the rebate for four years now. The discount, which she said is not aligned with any singular religious affiliation... I'll believe it when I see it, hasn't been advertised and is offered per the discretion of the wait staff. So if they see you praying, like praying before your meal or something, they could possibly give you 15% off. And somebody I, I posted I originally posted this on my Facebook feed, and I wanted to save my thoughts for it till this for this show. But uh, uh, Mars Girl, she already. She's, she's already said one of the biggest things that I'm thinking of is like, you know, people could like kind of fake it and get the discount. It's like, yeah. it's like, yeah. 
And then, of course, you have the others that have other types of prayers. Well, like like uh, Dodger of Zion, she mentioned that, well, what if I wanted to do the thing with the pagan stuff with the – I don't remember the exact thing. I don't have it up, but but if you wanted to have like a pagan – you know, like a small pagan ritual prayer right there with your breakfast or something, you know, that sort of thing. Or if you wanted to pray to Satan right there, <laughs> you know, thank you, Satan, for allowing the Hobby Lobby ruling because now we can use religion to have – to allow women to get abortions and, and say fuck you to the law because religion, you know, that sort of thing, you know. He, that That opens up so many cans of worms there, but I am willing to bet – because because of how people in this nation tend to be when it comes to prayer stuff, they would most likely assume that it would be Christian, and they say singular religious affiliation, so long as you're Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal, Catholic, maybe not even Catholic, who knows. So that that's what I'm thinking. It's like they're probably limiting it to Christian prayer, although – if if somebody went in there and prayed to Satan, and made sure people knew they were praying to Satan, <laughs> this, this could this could be very very interesting to look at look at uh, as it goes further on down the line. Uh, do either of you have any thoughts? I'm just shaking my head. You can't see it, but I'm just shaking my head. <laughs> I love how we were just brain twins right there. Yeah. <laughs> This is, this is one of those times. Both the co-host and the guest are kind of dumbfounded. <laughs> I, I just I, – I, there's nothing I can say but the, 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 the smacking sound of the face palming. Yeah. I mean it is – it isn't required, obviously. You know, the wait staff isn't required to do it. They just do it willy-nilly. And in and of itself, it's it, it can be fine, you know, because – it's it, again. It's not a required thing, according to the article. It's it's not an actual company policy. It's just the wait staff decide they want to do it, and it's kind of an unofficial thing. And obviously, the company's okay with it. So, and, and it's generally harmless. People are saving money. I just I just want to see if they would really, you know, that that whole singular religious affiliation thing. I would like to see it actually be put into use. I would like to see it be put into use. I want them to give a discount to like a Satanist praying over their meal or a pagan doing a, you know, like a little pagan ritual over their breakfast or something. I want to see them give the discount to somebody doing that. Cuz cuz if they don't, then they're going to look like total assholes. <laughs> cuz it's like, um, yeah, you know, no religion, yeah, any religious affiliation. What do you mean? Uh Baptist, Pentecostal, Methodist, uh Presbyterian, what about pagans? Uh, we don't do pagans. Uh huh. <laughs> I, I just want to. I just want to see how that ends up turning out. Ah. Uh. Ah. Oh. So take a drink, everybody. We're going to Florida. Yeah, uh, Volusi- We have to. We really have to. We have to go to Florida because this guy. Uh, Volusa County. A group of South Daytona residents are lucky to be alive after an arsonist lit part of their apartment complex on fire while residents were home. He's an wait, asshole. Wait, 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 wait. What? That sentence did not contain naked, drunk, or driving. No, it did not. Or that zombies is so and drugs. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm sorry, uh, I interrupted you, but I just had to point that out because I. The, I, I didn't believe my eyes the first time I had read that sentence, and I was like, no, I, I really need to hear it read out loud. And now that I have, my brain is kind of like, no, 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 that's not right. There's no drinking. There's nothing wrong other than the like other than the uh, arsonist thing. So mm-hmm. and... this is a different brand of what the fuck, Florida. <laughs> oh yeah. So um, so he the news station spoke with a woman. Of- the arsonist was talking to us. He was dousing the complex with gasoline. Kathy Bailey's charred front door is being replaced after it was set on fire. And let's see, but she and her granddaughter are lucky to be alive after police say Arthur Avery, God damn it, change your first name, did not find who he was looking for, a man by the name of Ted, a man Bailey says she's never heard of, which was a response Avery didn't like. And he just started splashing the gasoline on it. And I said, my granddaughter's in there. And he said, well, you better get her. So I ran in. My other girlfriend came in from out of town, who came in from out of town, said there's a child in there. He said, I don't give a damn. And he grabbed, and so they got, they all got out. And 
and he not only, you know, you know it's basically, guy couldn't find what he was looking for, so he said, fuck it, just, you know, torch the place. But, um, there's, there's something else. Yeah, he kind of, uh, he kind of lit himself on fire, too. <laughs> that sounds like Florida. Yes! Yeah, now, now we're in Florida. Yeah. Now we're in Florida. Oh, yeah. Avery himself is being treated for burns. Witnesses told police that when Avery knelt down to light the fire, that he caught fire himself. <laughs> <laughs> when you use gasoline, like, fire tends to spread more. Yeah. And if you're going to use gasoline, like, all right, listen, I, I know I'm going to take a page out of Tara's book here, but, like, this is how you be a better criminal. <laughs> use gasoline responsibly. Yes. Do not just burn it to the ground just because you're all like, oh, I can't find this one mofo who totally owes me, like, 20 bucks because I need to go get my next hit. You gotta, like, think about it strategically. Like, don't just, like, spread the gasoline all willy-nilly. You gotta, like, put it in strategic locations. Like, you know where they're going to be. So, like, when they get there, this metaphorical Ted, or if he really wasn't a person who existed, because, let's face it, we're talking about Florida. If he really existed, you should have figured out where he actually lives so that you could just light his shit on fire. Yeah, there you go. Instead of setting this whole building on fire, you know, causing people to run out, making them move and destroying their homes just because you couldn't find some one motherfucker. But you know what? I, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that, that he set himself on fire. <laughs> you know, this doesn't even make sense because let's say you're after somebody and you know eventually you're going to have to commit a crime in the process of apprehending him. From the time that you have a witness, mm -hmm. and you're like, you and your granddaughter should get out. Like, what the fuck are you setting the fire for? Because now you're going to get caught and there's going to be a witness. But he didn't attempt to kill the witness. Like, this guy is not a criminal. No, well... Like, well, he's, not, he's a he's dumbass. Just, he's not he's a not criminal a mastermind. Yeah. Like this guy's retarded. <laughs> oh god! Oh god! That actually reminds me. Uh, you, a bit of a, a bit of a t side tangent on here, but uh, before the show, I noticed that that uh, Jontron, he, he called something retarded as well, and people jumped down his throat about it. It's like, really? Uh, look at the context. What is what? What's he call? What is he putting that word to? Is it a person? No. Shut up. <laughs> That's one of those words that – and my, my view of it may change over time, but at this particular point, it's like, okay, is it being used towards a person that deserves it and, 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 and all of that or a thing or an idea or whatever? But yeah, I, I just kind of wanted to throw that out there because the word is like, oh, yeah, JonTron. Uh, so yeah, that, that little bit there. Um, I don't know. I may get letters. I may not. <laughs> Um, my, my feelings on the word retarded are like this. Are you referring to somebody with mental disabilities as retarded? Okay, don't do that. Are you referring to somebody who's really fucking slow as retarded? Congratulations. There you go. <laughs> uh, and, and not sure how Jess feels about it. I don't know. I don't know if we have offended her even. I hope not. <laughs> no, you haven't. I'm just like listening to you guys. It's fine. Um, I, okay. I get the feeling that would take some difficulty. No, um, I, I, like, I don't get offended by most words. The one word I really get offended by, really, in terms of how much I want to kill somebody whenever they use it, mm -hmm. is, and I was actually watching the news earlier, and, and, and they actually used the word, and I was like, oh my god, you guys are assholes. Uh -oh. But, um, they used the word bipolar in the wrong context. Oh. And for those of you who don't know, I am bipolar. Yeah. And... That really just pisses me off more than anything in the universe. It just kind of annoys me. And, like, I got really annoyed because this one guy was talking on the news today about some... I think he was actually talking about John Bonner, or Boner, whatever his name is. <laughs> and he it was saying, you know, at first he was like, you know, oh, we got to, you know, we got to push everything, like, halted in the House and, and the Senate or whatever. And now we're like trying to push as many things through, and then he was like, that is so bipolar, and I'm like, no, that's not how you use that word. Ooh, I, I, I don't think, I don't think that word thinks, means what you think it means, guys. Uh, even, even, I admit, I don't, I, there aren't many opportunities for me to discuss bipolar, even, even though I know several people who ha who suffer from bipolar, who have it, suffer it, which, whichever you see it, and there's just, even I realize that's not how you do it. 
No, no, it's not. Oh, um, I, I barely understand it myself. And I watch a soap opera with one of the main characters who, at least on show, has been classified as bipolar. Whether the show is completely medically accurate on that, the jury's still out. But, <laughs> oh, but yeah. So that 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 was that was a fun little tangent. <laughs> oh, but yeah, dude sets himself on fire trying to get to some other guy. Idiot. Uh, speaking of idiots, Mississippi. Good old Mississippi. Oh, I'm literally, no. I'm literally two states away from Mississippi. I literally. feel so bad for you. Yeah, well, the the two states away, well, yeah, yeah, two states away, and that that state happens to be Florida, unfortunately, but oh well. Uh, Mississippi gov Mississippi rather Governor uh, Phil Mississippi, Bryant. Mississippi, really? Mississippi. You really are for our, you really are from Florida. Apparently, <laughs> Mississippi Governor Phil Bryant blamed President Barack Obama, of course, because he's a Republican. <laughs> Okay, probably not just because he's Republican. He's probably got some corporate. No, that's ass. a prerequisite. If you don't hate Obama, you're not a Republican. That's kind of like how it works. Woohoo! Well, oh, wait, I, I, I claim independent anyway, so meh. All right, but he's blaming President Barack Obama for a reported increase in uninsured Mississippians. The problem is, Bryant didn't acknowledge that he's been a staunch re opponent, rather, of expanding Medicaid under Obamacare and refused to encourage enrolling in private coverage through healthcare.gov. So, yeah. So, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. He's willingly disobeying the law and blaming the president for it. Yep. I hate the South. Yeah, I want to get out of the South. Kat, do you want to get out of the South? I live in the Midwest. Uh, well. It's technically different. That is true. Technically? I need to hear why this is technically different. Um, because... At least in the Midwest, there are points of civilization where those particular cities are mm, more liberal than, than every fucking inch of the state in between. So I live in St. Louis, um, and between St. Louis and Kansas City, these are the, the, the shining bright points of Missouri that... Uh, that think like human beings and uh, don't watch as much Fox News as the rest of our state. Yeah. It's very interesting that there is no interstate going through your state capital there. Very interesting. <laughs> At least not that I've seen. Uh, and, I'm sorry. What are you referring to my state capital as? Uh, it, no, it's telling that your state capital doesn't have any interstates going through it. What? Do you know yeah, what my state capital is? Jefferson City, right? Okay, I'm just making sure. Yeah, I know what I your state capital is. Because I didn't mention Jeff City. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I, I know exactly what I'm talking about. And by the way, Jeff City isn't anywhere near the rest of civilization. So it's sort yeah. of like, man, really, it, it should be St. Louis, but it's not. Oh. But I'm not originally from the Midwest anyway. Yeah. Yeah, it's the way that a lot of people think about um, New York City. New York City, every, like Albany is our state capital. And everybody's like, why isn't it New York City? We have, like, 15 million people there. Like, come on, guys. Like, the entire reason that whole state is democratic is because of us. Because yeah. the rest of the state is so rural that if New York City did not exist and was actually in Jersey, mm -hmm. New York would be a red state. Probably. I mean, I again, I can... Well, funny thing about me driving trucks for a living at a point in our time, I can relate a li even slightly to both of you on this. Because I've been through Jefferson City. Yeah, it is literally out in the middle of nowhere. And everything outside of New York City and, and like, and Albany and even, well, even Buffalo a little bit too. Lots of rural area. Very beautiful, by the way. But it's lots of rural area out there in New York, in New York State. So it's like, I know this. I see experience. I'm like, yay. I can relate, sort of. <laughs> I, th I think it's fun. And, of course, Florida, we actually have the same thing because we're known for, you know, besides the crazy, naked, shooty, set-yourself-on-fire people, we're also known for, like, Disney World and theme parks. All of those in Orlando, Tampa, Daytona, that sort of thing. We're also known for Miami. But the state capital is up here in the taint, Tallahassee, nowhere near the largest city. And... You know, we're, we're in a similar situation because I think Florida, I think voting wise, I think we've been a blue state a, at least a time or two. So and that's mostly because of like Orlando, Miami, Jacksonville, 
etc. Whereas everybody up here, they all bitch and whine and complain because, oh, we did vote for him. Why, why did our state turn blue? Because more people voted for the other guy than you. That's okay, how I, have it works. Two, I have two things to say about this. Number one, Celebration Florida scares the living shit out of me. I've been there once. How terrible is it? Because I feel like it's like one of those planned communities that I would like totally like be afraid not to smile. Like like uh, the mouse would come and get me. Yeah. It, 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 keep in mind, this the last time I was there, I was like, I think maybe not even in high school uh, at the time. So my memory is a little fuzzy, but it, it got it gave me the vibe of like 1950s TV. Oh, God, that's terrible. Yeah. Which at the time I thought oh, it looks nice, yeah, whatever. And now I look back on it and I think the same thing. It's like, oh shit, <laughs> Where, where's where's your sense of originality, your your personality, people? Come on. I mean, I know it's nice, you know. I mean, you can have your basic house setups, you can have your house plans all copy and pasted down the road, but you know, have something to define your houses a little bit better, you know. You know, have one house made of brick, another house made of whatever, or you could put like. Uh, Gryffindor banners on one house and then Hufflepuff on another one or what have you. I'm using Harry Potter references and I don't even watch or read watch the films or read the books. So I better stop before In um <laughs> In relationship to Harry Potter, if you did do that in Celebration Florida, the one thing I would really want to happen mm-hmm. is if there was a Hufflepuff banner, I would really want to have a Slytherin family move into it just for the hilarity. <laughs> be kind of interesting oh so all right our, our last story for this week because we are running a little low on time uh this one's out of utah and i say utah because i'm really hoping that my best friend is actually listening to this show and can probably facepalm from this one i i i did when i first read it a ballard man was charged with assaulting a woman and throwing her raccoon against the wall it's the raccoon that gets it for me The 41-year-old man was charged Friday in 8th District Court with domestic violence assault, a third-degree felony, and cruelty to an animal, a Class B misdemeanor. Why is cruelty to an animal that much lower on the scale than domestic violence? I mean, you know, bring it up. Bring, Bring the cruelty to an animal up a little bit here, you know. You know, that. but that's my own thing. Um, the evening of July 14th, an officer arrived at a home near the address where a woman told him that she and the man had been in a fight, according to the probable cause statement. The man had called her by his ex-wife's name, and when she asked him about that, he allegedly grabbed her by her arms and threw her into a wall, according to the statement. Because that's the proper response when you accidentally call somebody the wrong name, right? And, you know, you ask them about it, and when you're asked about it, then you just throw them into the wall. That's, that's, you know, that's the proper response, right? I mean, I mean... That works in professional wrestling. (laughs) <laughs> in comic book movies oh okay comic book movies maybe professional wrestling maybe but yeah but I'm, I'm fairly certain drax the destroyer did this at least once in the film <laughs> i thought it was like six times but i lost count after like the first time so yeah <laughs> we're too busy going oh, the soundtrack yeah uh and then she collapsed to the floor and after they continued to argue the woman's pet raccoon hissed at the man so he grabbed the animal by its collar and threw it into a back room, hitting a wall. Because, God damn it, I don't want no raccoon giving me no lip. Ay, it's just hissing, dude. Calm the fuck down. I mean, it's not like it's Rocket Raccoon. It's going to build a bomb and put it in a box and leave it there. I mean, come on. Get, well, although. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, they're raccoons. They collect shiny things. It might happen. Very much so. And it's just... And, and they... The article does note that, you know, for people who are wondering, well, wait, why the hell does she have a pet raccoon? Utah law allows people to keep raccoons as long as they have a permit. So she had a license to to have a raccoon. Okay, cool. Sure. Uh, And and, and she ended up, uh, you know, tying it back into when she got the cops involved. She went to her ex-husband's motor home and, and ended up calling the cops, and she ended up getting taken to the emergency room. And the investigators... She told investigators she suffered two or three broken ribs. Thankfully, the guy is in jail. So, yeah, fuck this guy. <laughs> fuck this guy. First, you know, you know, okay, yeah, you call somebody the wrong name. 
I'm going to assume that it was in the heat of passion because that would make it just that much more awkward. And, you know, that that's, you know, that happens every now and then, I suppose, especially if I'm going to assume like this guy probably maybe a re this this woman may be a rebound. I don't know. Uh, but uh but yeah. So um so all right. Actually um I kind of actually uh, got a few extra minutes. So I am going to go down to the one more one more story, and um, this one, this one I don't think this says exactly where it's out of, but we actually have a picture of it. I'll put it up on the screen here, and it is a note that a house sitter had left behind after he finished house sitting for somebody. Ooh ooh ooh! Can I read it? Cause I I I, I got a really I, I I got like a lot of. I can inject the paranoia as it happens. Okay, you gonna you gonna read the uh, like the actual note or or? Yeah, the actual note. Okay, go for it. This okay. is, this is the note that was left behind by somebody after he house sat for someone. Go ahead. Okay, jumped on trampoline, bruised penis. Don't think I understand how these things work. Neighbor came by, asked for soap. I suspect he wanted to eat it. Do not trust. Saw a weird bird, pelican. A pelican. <laughs> <laughs> on fence offered to, to play backgammon with bird but could not find a game set a pity Aww. bird came back later and asked for soap why soap must know suspect conspiracy will monitor more closely henceforth penis is healing well some of the toiletries i found in your bathroom seem to ease tenderness don't worry put back what i didn't use all of your silverware tastes confusing ran an extensive series of tests results inconclusive Welcome home. Don't look under back deck. Noises should subsi subside with time. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> and that is that is amazing. This is how you prank somebody because obviously none of this stuff ever happened. And the only reason we know about it is is a uh, uh, who was it? It was posted online by Reddit user So Something, who wrote, "I'm sure he was just trolling us. He's the kind of person I trust to watch over my house and my dogs while we're out of town." Talked to him while we were driving home. He didn't mention the note, but it was totally normal. I think he just left it as a joke for us to find. This is how you play a joke on somebody. This is this is how you troll somebody right here. You just, I would do this. I would yes. do this in a heartbeat. I would too. Just it would be awesome. <laughs> oh, but yeah. So with that, uh, we are we are running close out of time. We we wanted to, you know, we had the time, and Jess was just so enthusiastic about it. <laughs> Oh my god, it was the best note. I was like, oh my god, I would totally do that. All the time. Yes. Oh, so with that, we are going to go ahead and get out of here for this week. We will be back next week. And starting next week, once I get all of the emails for the newbies on the site out, I'm going to start bringing them on to the show to talk about themselves a little bit. Kind of kind of as a uh, you know welcome to the site type thing. It'll, it'll be over the next several weeks. Well, next ten weeks, really. And... We'll have them on, say hello, so you guys get to know them a little bit better, um, you know that sort of thing. So it'll be it'll be kind of nice to have those guys in rotation. Well, guys and girls, because there's going to be a little bit of each, obviously. Uh, just law of averages that has to happen. Anyway, uh, if you wanted to find the cat online, where could we find her? Um, you can find me over at 1201 beyond.com for my other show with Josh Hadley, What the Fuck, and you can find me over on That Guy with the Glasses uh, for my other other show, Nerd to the Third Power under the podcast tab, and then you can also find me on Twitter at LabyrinthCat and Facebook.com slash NerdistCat. And where can we find Jess if we wanted to talk to her? Um, I'm on Twitter at RavenAllegria13. I'm not going to explain it 300 times. Um... <laughs> I'm also on Tumblr at ravenallegria13.tumblr.com. I'm also on Facebook, uh, backslash ladiespaz13, which will bring up the fool's gold, the mediocrity of the whole, uh, golden age of Hollywood page. And you can reach me by email as well at ravenallegria13 at gmail.com. Uh, you can send whatever you want. You could either tell me that I'm a terrible person and that I should go, you know, die in a lake of fire, or you could say, your boobs are really nice. I should date you, and I'll probably turn you down. <laughs> Oh, so yeah, points to know anybody who's thinking of doing that. Oh, you have no idea how many propositions I get in my Tumblr ass box. You have no idea. Wow, hmm. and they're all anonymous, 
And I'm like sitting there going, okay, I can't answer you if you're not going to tell me who you are so that I can't properly respond to you. Yeah, because what if it's somebody who is just – who really, really likes you and is just shy? You know, we can't can't have that. Of course, there's probably a whole bunch of creepers too. In that, that case, if they start hissing, run the fuck away. That's right. Oh, so if you wanted to find me on social media, you can find me at Gomer21XX on the Twitters and the Tumblers. You can also find my stuff on RTGomer.com and NerdVice.com, which, by the way, you can also also find Jess over there, too. I uh. totally forgot about NerdVice. <laughs> bad, Jess. Bad. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Oh. And if you want to – if you like the shows that I do and you want to help support for better equipment, more materials, etc., then uh, head on over to patreon.com slash gomer to one double X. You can pledge however however much or however little you want, and that money will go you know to new equipment, new shows, new recording spaces, all of that good stuff. Um, I'm actually going to try and work on a constructive deconstruction episode where we talk about Patreon, and I can go a little bit more in-depth than I have time for here because uh, I, I never seem to have the same thing going twice when I do these. But um, but anyways, uh, patreon.com slash gomer to one double X. And by the way, uh, Jess has one too. Don't you have a Patreon? I do. Yeah. In, in fact, I, I kind of kind of hope you do. Otherwise, uh, where where would that money be going? Because I'm kind of tossing it there. <laughs> oh, um, well, right now I'm like getting nine dollars a month, which is kind of sad, but it's totally true. Yeah. Um, let me pull it up because I actually don't know what's on my. Because <laughs> I haven't looked at it in like three days. Um, because like grad school again, grad school. Um, mm-hmm. right now, um, I'm for two hundred dollars a month. If I make two hundred dollars a month, I will set up an actual complete studio in my room. Um, five hundred will be equipment costs, and if I get seven hundred and fifty dollars a month, I'll go full time. I will be adding a DVD, and um, because I got public domain stuff, so that's kind of great. Um, I will be adding a DVD and some merchandise at some point. I'm still trying to work out some stuff with Lewis. I'm actually talking to him about it because I'm like, I want to know where he got his stuff made because he made it for pretty cheap and I can actually do that, which would be great. Um, so yeah, I have to revamp that. Like, yeah. Basically for the next month, everything will be moving along as planned as if I didn't, I'm not changing the show. Mm-hmm. But come September, I'm basically revamping everything. Right, and if people wanted to throw money at you, where, where exactly on Patreon could they find you? Uh, Patreon.com backslash RavenAllegria13. Oh. Or there's also, oh, and also I have a, I have a blog spot, foolsgoldenage.blogspot.com, mm-hmm. where you can um, see all the extra stuff that I don't put on NerdVice, like this podcast, um, the insert witty name show uh, from uh, Unemployed Historian that I was on, uh, that's where I post all the crossovers I'm part of. So if you like crossovers, you should definitely go check those out. Yay! Which means you guys you guys are going to hear me over there twice because I was on that same show earlier this week. Yes, um, you were. Yes, and as a bonus, because uh, I, would, I would feel really bad if I don't plug her as well, uh, my girlfriend, Becky Hopkins, does all sorts of wonderful artwork, title card artwork, some of which you'll see, you can see around the site. Um, you can also throw money at her on Patreon at patreon.com slash Hop. And, you know, not only do, can you do it there, it also has a link to her DeviantArt, her own website, all of that good stuff. And if you throw enough money at her, she will do a 30-second animation for you, which I highly recommend because she is an award-winning animator. <laughs> uh, so and now she's probably blushing. And we've kind of kind of rambled a little bit here at the end, but uh, that should be about everything. Thank you guys so much for uh, listening and for putting up with the the uh, extra rambling. I, I That's all, my, all me there. <laughs> So, um, again, we will see you next week. And until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Jess Kittrick and the Cat signing off. Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.